So I got up early this morning, about quarter to five. That's early. I was awake. I thought, okay, I'll start praying. Reached over, grabbed my phone, went to my app, started my Marian devotions. And I realized as I went through two of the prayers, 15 minutes each, how little I was paying attention to the words. How I kept thinking about my dad and this chemo treatment he's going to have today. Whether or not I'm going to spend the night when I go see him because I'm pitching in. My brother's going out of town. I just keep thinking about other things in my life other than that prayer. So I kept going and I said, okay, as I continue on, Lord, I will focus more, I promise. And then I went on to One, two, three more audible prayers, barely paying attention. Here and there, I would be grabbed and pulled back into what was actually going on in terms of the prayer. But I fought distractions the whole time. What didn't I do? Well, the first thing, I didn't really prepare. I just jumped right into it grabbed my phone, and started. What is preparation for prayer? It's really getting your heart and your mind to put yourself in the presence of God. And of course, mind is a Mary in devotion, so in the presence of Mary as well, and Jesus. Did I use any holy water? Did I light a holy candle? No, <laughs> I just grabbed my phone. So when I was halfway through all my prayers, I said, enough. This is not counting, at least in my mind. So then I started all over. And it was okay. It was better, but it wasn't as good. And I think about what heaven is going to be like. The readings were quite interesting. And I think about That is what we are going to do in heaven is to be praying and to be worshiping and to be saying, I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I proclaim your greatness. I mean, when we look at the readings today, it was mostly the Psalms that got me to be thinking about heaven. And I remember when I first heard a priest say, heaven's going to be a lot like mass. (laughs) And I was in the beginning of my journey and I'm like, What? (laughs) No, it's got to be better than mass. Come on. Like, isn't it supposed to be blissful and awesome and we're just supposed to be doing whatever we want to do? I've never, at that time, I hadn't really thought about what heaven would be like. But when you look at the book of Revelation, you can see it's constant praising. Holy, holy, holy Lord. You've got the whole army of angels, plus the men, the old men, the priests. And we're going to be around there too. Who knows what level we'll be at, but we will be honoring and worshiping God. I don't think we're going to be hanging out, watching TV with our friends and family over beers. That's not what heaven is going to be like. Okay, so there were some other things. Like, this is just to show you how critical prayer is. And when you don't have a good prayer time, don't worry. St. Francis de Sales says, even though all you do is fight distractions through your prayer time, if you keep your prayer time like you've, tell, like you've told yourself and like you've promised God, like I did, I did it, it wasn't that good, And I even went back and did half of it over again. God knows that I tried. It's when I get up and I don't continue with my prayers. Maybe I got halfway through and I said, you know what? This isn't working. I'm not going to pray. That is when I sin. Because the first of the greatest commandments of all 10 is to keep God, the only one God, in the center of our life, and to worship him. That means to pray. 
And then it was time for mental prayer, which if you've been following my podcast, you know that lately I've been struggling with mental prayer because of traveling down to the city and not having the time to really sit in silence. But that's a total crock, by the way. As those words were coming out of my mouth, I want to take them back. I do have time to pray. That's a crock. I could get up a half an hour earlier than what I'm doing to get downtown. I could get up at 4. I could get up at 4.30. I could also take some time during my visitation with my father and take a moment to pray, to reflect, to do the mental prayer. I just need to do it. I need to make that choice. Because prayer is communication with God. When you're just doing vocal prayer, meaning you're reciting words and you're not actually meditating on the words, that's not communication. It's almost like a one-way train. You may, you know, get some consolations. You may feel good about, you know, the vocal prayer that you're praying. You may feel really engaged. By the way, you can make vocal prayers, meditations, All you got to do is focus and make sure that you truly do open your heart and ask God, what do you want me to do for you today? Sometimes you'll get answers. Other times you won't. Sometimes the readings, if you do the daily readings and that's how you meditate, aren't going to necessarily resonate so much with you. And that is okay. Don't think that God is dissing you and he's not coming to you in prayer. You're just not getting it for that day. So what do we do? We thank him. We thank him for the time. We thank him for his love. We thank him for his mercy. And we ask him for his direction throughout our day. Please, Lord, at any point in time today, you can tell me what you want me to do to better love you, know you, and serve you. Then I went to the morning offering. I want to read you these things because I think they're beautiful. Okay. Morning offering is from the Catholic company. I get a, an email from them every single day. Some days I read, some days I don't. Sometimes I go months without reading. Today I thought, oh my gosh, these are perfect. Okay. So in the quote of the day, whenever I go to the chapel, this is by St. Catherine Labore. Whenever I go to the chapel, I put myself in the presence of our good Lord, and I say to him, Lord, here I am. Tell me what you would have me do. If he gives me some task, I am content, and I thank him. If he gives me nothing, I still thank him, since I do not deserve to receive anything more than that. And then I tell God everything that is in my heart. I tell him about my pains and my joys, and then I listen. If you listen, God will also speak to you. For with the good Lord, you have to both speak and listen. God always speaks when you approach him plainly and simply. Here is a meditation coming from a book that is an excerpt from the word From the book Unworried by Dr. Gregory Popcak. P-O-P-C-A-K. When, this is a good one about Mass. When you're at Mass, don't just go through the motions. Ask God to help you find him in the Eucharist. When you hear or read scripture, prayerfully ask God what he is saying to you through the words. When you pray, don't just say words at God. Bring your whole self to it. Rededicate your life and your relationship to him and ask for the grace to be his disciple in all you do. And of course, take a little time each day to learn more about what it means to be, whoops, to love and be loved by him. The more your faith becomes intrinsic, the more you will be able to put aside your anxiety Sit at the feet of the Lord and let your heart be still 
knowing that he is God. Okay, prayer. It is, whoops, <laughs> I just tripped over something. Anyway, walking around my room, I pace when I do the podcast, just giving you a visual. All right, prayer. It is the relationship. It is the communication. It is the way that we speak and we listen to God. So if you are struggling with prayer, don't worry because that's normal. We could have great days one day and horrible days the next. You can be at any point in your journey and have amazing consolations come to you in prayer and then have the next day be absolutely distracting. As long as you choose to love God and you keep yourself focused and dedicated to that time, which in my humble personal opinion is a minimum of 30 minutes. It's supposed to be a minimum of 15. So in other words, when you grab that rosary of yours and you pray the rosary, hopefully you pray it every day, that that can be your mental prayer. Can be. I say that because most of us don't make it be our prayer. Most of us just have it be a vocal prayer where we're halfway even paying attention. But if you actually meditated on all of the mysteries, put yourself in the scenes, maybe you're a character, maybe you're Mary, maybe you're Jesus through each one, maybe you're a bystander, and you truly ask God, like, Lord, what is it out of this that you want me to work on in my life? And you get some clarity and some answers to that. That is what the rosary is supposed to be. I mean, if we're praying that every day, that is scripture and can be our mental prayer every single day. But so many of us don't do that. That's why when we do pray the rosary or when we sit down to specifically do mental prayer, we must, and I say this, As best I can, we must do our best to truly give our heart and our soul to God and to listen and speak and read the words and be engaged. So it does matter how you prepare. It does matter when and where you pray. And it does matter how you listen and learn. Look, I'm not selling anything, but... I did make a 40-day prayer video course for people who have yet to have a regular prayer life. There's an email that comes to you every single day. It's me, three minutes. It's a tiny little video. You and I work on something every single day for 40 days. That's about how long it takes for a habit to get into place. So you can go to my website, look under Faith Services. My website is KendraVonash.com. It's also linked in the description of this podcast. So you can just click there and check it out. You have samples, by the way. You can see a couple of days of what the prayer course is like. So you can test it out, see if it's something for you. If it's not, that's fine. But darn it, get something to help you pray. Learn how to pray. It is not only a skill, but it is a skill that then develops into the most important relationship in your life, your relationship with God. Speaking of which, let's pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, we want to hear your voice. We want to do your will, but yet at the same time, We beat our heads against the wall with our prayer life. We're hot. We're cold. We do. We don't. We hear you. We are distracted. We need to learn. So please put in our heart a desire to have the most intimate relationship of our lives with you. Lord, we know we need you every single day. We need to pray incessantly, and many of us cannot pray for a certain amount of time every day. 
So please, Holy Spirit, Mary, the Mediatrix of Grace, please pour down grace into our hearts and our souls and give us that desire to love prayer, to be with God, to wrap ourselves in that peace, that joy, that love, and the promises of your son, Jesus. In your beautiful holy name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, that's the biggest thing that I want to impart on you this whole week. Prayer. I cannot tell you what prayer has been, what my faith has been through these, this last month. I really, truly, and it hasn't even been a month, almost a month. On the 30th, it will be a month that my dad has been in the hospital. And if it hasn't, if it hasn't, ugh, and if it wasn't, sorry, <laughs> for God, if it wasn't for prayer, if it wasn't for all of that time practicing to, oops, word of the day, my word of the day is be faithful, although that's two words. <laughs> but that's really wrapping right around this whole thing. If I am just faithful, if I lean on God, if I capture those thoughts like Jesus told me, not Jesus, sorry, that was St. Paul, and I make it obedient to Jesus, I can be peaceful. I can approach today with calmness. My dad's going to get another different more intense chemo treatment. And it's scary. But at the same time, I have peace. I'm just going to trust in God no matter what happens. It's God's will. He's willing it. He's allowing it. Nothing happens without God allowing it. And that should make us think, by the way, going on a totally different topic for one moment. God allows things to happen to us and happen in other people's lives around us. Even temptation. So you've got to think sometimes if that's what you're battling. Or as you're going through things like me, where it's out of your control, it's not a temptation. It's something that is illness or sickness or some financial thing. Something that is completely out of your control, but it is like swirling your life into despair. God is allowing it for a reason. We may not know that reason. It may be completely oblivious to us in the moment. And most of the time it is. It's usually when we reflect. But it's always. Something is sanctifying us in the moment. Something is sanctifying others. Just thinking about God allows everything for a reason. And we got to maybe think about that in our prayer. Maybe that's something that we reflect about today. Why am I still being tempted with this? Why am I still fighting anxiety in this situation? Oh, look, what a great moment to praise God because I'm going to him and I'm giving him my anxiety, my fear, my worry, and I'm feeling peace. You know, like we have to just think and look with God's eyes. Too often we think and look with our eyes. We use our brain, our limited capacity to understand what is going on because God sees everything, knows all, is always present, is always there. And often we minimize him and his greatness. So let's not do that. And let's realize that he can also give us those beautiful moments in prayer. So we should not give up on prayer. If that's a part of your life that is suffering, that's the most important part that we all need to get back in to gear. All right, everyone. I love you all. Find something more with God, soul, mind, and body, and have a blessed and inspired day.